Hey guys, I'm Kyle, and in this week's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make the ultimate line squaring program. Line squaring is a technique that I prototyped some time ago for FLL robots, and it's where you can use two color sensors mounted to the front of your robot to align your robot such that it's perfectly 90 degrees or square relative to any line on the FLL mat. Now I'm expanding on all of the concepts and programs that I showed in my previous video. A viewer recently contributed an awesome program to me where he took a lot of my concepts one step further, or in this case several steps further, to make the ultimate line squaring program. Not only is it more accurate than my line squaring, but it's also a lot faster too, which will save you precious time on the FLL mat. And it's also highly customizable, so you can adjust a lot of different settings for your own robot. This is a really awesome program for anyone participating in something like FLL or WRO. And if you're interested in making more complex programs, then this video is the right one for you. Of course, if you haven't seen my original video on line squaring, I recommend that you go see it now uh, because that teaches a lot of the foundation concepts that you'll need when programming this line squaring program today. The program that I'm showcasing in this week's video was created by a viewer on my channel named Bendik Skarpness. Bendik is from Norway and formerly a part of FLL Team Gozen. Bendik saw some of my videos and was inspired to create even cooler versions of my programs. And so big thanks to Bendik for providing these programs to me so I can share them with you today. Before we start programming, you'll need to open up Port View and use your color sensor to measure three reflected light intensities. You'll first need to measure a black target with the sensor placed directly over the black part of the line. Then you'll need to measure a white target where the sensor is placed over the white part of the line. Finally, you'll need to measure your target value, which you'll measure with your color sensor in between the black and white regions of the line. Now it's time for a walkthrough of the programming behind this ultimate line squaring algorithm. It all gets streamlined into this one my block, which I'll be expanding in just a second. And this my block lays out all of the parameters in front of you so you can customize the line squaring's performance without having to go into the programming. I've covered parameters before in another tutorial, so you can click up here if you'd like to check out that video. Anyway, let's take a look at the actual parameters. The first one is called black white, and this tells your robot whether you want it to look for the black part of the line or the white part of the line for line squaring. And this is a really awesome feature because it lets you choose whichever one has more contrast to its surroundings. So it's a true false value. If you choose false, then it's going to look for the white part of the line. And if you choose true, then it's going to look for the black part of the line. The second one is called return after x seconds and this basically just tells the robot how long in seconds you want it to work on the line squaring which is really awesome and it, so it makes it adjustable so if you're in a time crunch you can slow it down or if you have plenty of time you can increase the time for more accuracy. Then there's the target light intensity which is where the robot is going to try to square itself to. There's also target black which tells you uh, which allows you to tell the robot what the black looks like in terms of light intensity and the same for the white so you can define a white light intensity for the robot then you have start speed which is the power percentage that the robot would use to approach the the line initially before it starts squaring and then we have forward speed and backward speed which are the speeds that the robot uses to make its adjustments and usually uh, forward speed and backward speed you, you might want to keep them the same speed, just negate each other. Uh, one thing that's interesting to note is that forward speed should be a speed that makes your, your robot drive in reverse because forward speed means if the robot is too far forward of the line, it needs to drive in the reverse direction. So that's why forward speed is negative and reverse speed or backward speed is positive. Anyway, that's enough about the my block. Let's jump into the programming that's inside of it. So I'll click on this tab here, which will expand it. You can see all of the parameters from the MyBlock are being read here, and they're initially stored in all of these variables for later use in the rest of the program. And then we enter a loop. So the first stage is the course adjustment stage. So this is when the robot is first approaching the line, and it starts doing course 
uh, adjustments to get it kind of close to square on the line and it does fine adjustments later but first we're going over course so the course adjustment stage lights up the brick LEDs red and this is really awesome because it helps you with debugging so you know which stage the robot is in when it's actually going to square and then it reads your start speed and sets the robot to drive forward at that power until it finds the line so then it reads your choice for the black and white and it adjusts the programming accordingly using a switch block so if you selected true that means you're looking for the black line so we'll go up here so right here it's going to read your target light intensity and see if the color sensor on port 1 is reading a light intensity less than or equal to your target now it's important to note that motor B is paired with color sensor 1 and that's on the left side of the robot so if so if that light intensity is low enough lower than the target or equal to it then it stops motor B and it turns motor C on in the forward direction until the color sensor 4 starts to see a reflected light intensity less than the target and just like we paired motor B with sensor 1 on the left side motor C is paired with sensor 4 on the right side and then when that is satisfied motor C shuts off and it interrupts this loop which this uh, loop number one contains the course adjustment stage and um, <clears throat> then it moves on to the fine adjustment stage if this is false then it's going to again compare the target light intensity and it's going to move motor B forward instead of motor C until then it gets close enough to the target and then it stops motor B and then uh, interrupts that loop and then moves on to the fine adjustment then down here we have the false case of this switch which is the uh, black white switch and this just changes the program up a little bit and mirrors some of the actions so it's looking for the the white line instead of the black line so instead of being less than or equal to the target now it's looking for a light intensity that's greater than or equal to your target and you can see that all of these inequality signs are flipped and that's that's pretty much the only difference it's just a superficial difference because now you're looking for white instead of black now we move on to the fine adjustment stage and here the brick LED changes the to orange so now you know that it's moved on to the next part of the line squaring at this point in the program the motors color sensors are sort of close to being square with the line and it's the fine adjustment stages job to get the robot as square as possible relative to that line and it makes individual adjustments to motor B and motor C so they're adjusted separately and it starts with motor B so the very first stage of the fine adjustment is going to read your target black light intensity and compare it to the relative light intensity of the left color sensor and if the left sensor has a darker reading than the target you set then it knows it's a little bit too far forward and it needs to drive back so this forward speed which drives the robot in reverse again it's called forward speed because that's if the robot was too far forward of the target and therefore needs to drive in reverse and then it's so then it moves motor B in that reverse direction if this returns false so then if the uh, color sensor reading is not less than the target black value it then tests to see if that same color sensor is reading greater than the target white value instead and if so then it knows the robot is too far backward of the line and so it's going to drive the robot at that backward speed which again is the forward direction and if both of these return false then the robot the color sensor is right where it needs to be so it just shuts motor B off and idles there next we move on to motor C which works just the same way as motor B so it checks the right color sensors light uh, reflected light intensity relative to the black light intensity target and it moves it forward if it sees the uh, if it moves it reverse if it sees the robot is too far forward then it compares it to the white light intensity target and then moves it in the forward direction if it sees it's too far backwards relative to the line and then it's going to do one final check to see if all of the color sensors are where they need to be so it's going to take your target black value and your target white value and then read the reflected light intensity off of the color sensor uh, sorry this should say sensor port 1 and it's going to measure that light intensity and use that as the test value and see if it's in between the target black and the target white values and if that returns true that means that color sensor in port 1 is in the correct place then it's going to do the same thing for the color sensor in port 4 which is the right side so it compares that 
to target black and target white and if that's also uh, within the this uh, defined boundary then it's going to return true and it uses this logic block with the and statement so if both a and B that means if both the left and the right side are within those boundaries then the robot is perfectly square with respect to the line and you can move on with the rest of your programming and that will trigger this loop interrupt and cause the robot to then move outside of this loop and move on to the rest of its programming and if not then it's just going to loop back around and it reads your return after seconds variable to keep the robot in the loop for however many seconds that you've defined and that's how it limits itself based on time. I'm returning to this my block one last time because I want to show you how I set up the parameters to um, optimize this program for my specific robot Sirius. So first for this black white parameter I set this to true because I wanted to search for the black part of the line. The second parameter which is return after so many seconds I set that to one second because I found the line squaring to be very efficient and I never needed more than one second to get an accurate square. For my target I set that to 20% reflected light intensity and then for my black target I set that to the target minus 5 or 15 and for the white target I set that to the target plus 5 or 25. Then for my approach speed I set that to 20% but since my robot Sirius drives forward with negative power I set that instead to negative 20 and then I kept these the same but of course I needed to negate them again because my uh, again my robot Sirius drives forward with negative power so this should be in the reverse direction and this should be in the forward direction so that's positive 10 for a reverse and then negative 10 for forward so let's try this out and see how it works with Sirius Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.